think the ones who get away are blessed. Lucky. But what if the killed are the lucky ones? Come closer and see. Rob Riley and Cassie Maddox. See into the trees. The body of a young girl was found. Is this something to do with the others? Oh, you can. 21 years ago, three kids go into those woods. Only one comes out alive. This isn't for us, not this one. We can't do this. Why not? about you into the trees you and me into the trees I know what I'm doing do you those children were taken as a reckoning you're never going to find them time is running out you need more you trust me I should never have done. What if three children ran into a wood to play and only one ever came out and he had no memory of what had happened to the other two? And what if 20 years later he was a murder detective and another murdered child drew him back to that woods? I grew up as an international brat. My dad was with the World Bank, the World Food Programme, the FAO. So we travelled around. I'd lived in three continents by the time I was seven, things like that. I'm a mixed, I'm a mongrel anyway, Russian, Irish, Italian, American, mixed in there together. So I think that actually does have an influence on the way I ended up writing. Because when you grow up like that, as an international brat, you can almost belong just about anywhere, but you never quite 100% belong anywhere. I think there's actually an advantage to that in some ways as a writer because I know Dublin really, really well, but the fact that I'm not 100% pure Dubliner, I wasn't born and brought up here, means that I notice things that native Dubliners take for granted. I, you can pick up on things. When I got the idea for In the Woods, I was a jobbing actor working on an archaeological site near Dublin in between two gigs. There was a woods near the dig and one day my mind was wandering and I just thought, what would happen if three children ran into that wood and only one ever came out? What would that do to his mind? And I scribbled down the idea on a piece of paper and went off to do the next show and forgot all about it. But then a year later I was moving flat and there's this piece of paper under all the phone bills and I thought, I really want to do something with that idea. I think being an actor is actually pretty good training for being a writer if you write in the first person, which I do, because in both cases what you're doing is you're trying to create a full three-dimensional character who will engage an audience's interest and then bring the audience on a journey with that character into that character's world. Rob Ryan's a character who's very intelligent, very witty, very arrogant, very insecure and so badly damaged by these events in his childhood that he's not capable of being honest either with himself or with the other characters or with his readers. This thing that happened to him in his childhood cracked him straight across and meant that his mind, his memory, has become an unreliable place where he doesn't feel safe. It's a treacherous place. And that affects everything he does. You follow the proceedings of a murder investigation in impeccable detail. How much of this is research and how much of it is your imagination? One of the things I did not expect about this when I went into it is just how much research is involved. I mean, I know about things, everything from the audition dates for the Royal Ballet School through to things that you actually probably don't want to know about, like rates of rigor mortis and decomposition and disturbing things like that. But there was a detective sergeant on the Irish police force who was just amazing. He took me around to places so that I could get descriptions right, he answered all my questions, he gave me huge amounts of time. Now the room we're sitting in has a very special significance in the book, doesn't it? This is the library bar in the Central Hotel, which is in a 
appropriately enough, central Dublin. And it's one of my favourite places to go because Dublin's got very crazy recently and this is one of the few places where there are, you know, there are big armchairs, there are old books and there's just a feeling that it hasn't changed very much in all the time it's been here. So probably because I like it, I set a scene from the book in here. There's a scene where the murdered little girl's sisters phone up Ryan and say they have something very important to tell him and they meet here. How, how, how risky is that? When you start a novel and you're like, you don't even know if there's, if, if there's even much story here. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Because you know, <clears throat> you know those guys who have, like, who have it all outlined out, chapter mm -hmm. by chapter, they know there's a book there. When they throw in a character or a subplot or something, they know it's all gonna come together in the end. It's gonna make a book. Whereas mm -hmm. if you just dive in, every time I have no idea if there's gonna be a book there or if I'm gonna be still writing 200,000 words later going, I'm sure it'll all come together one of these years. And you don't know. Yeah. But the, the other side is what you just said, where if you're taking yourself by surprise, if you're relying on your subconscious and letting things pop up occasionally, I hope anyway, Mm -hmm. that some of this has to come through to the reader, that sense of kind of revelation and everything mm -hmm. clicking into the place and you going, oh, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Some of that, I hope, comes through. Yeah. How much of that is sort of trusting the character and let, let the character carry the story as opposed to the writer? Oh yeah, big time, absolutely. For me, the plot comes out of the character. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is the reason why I don't have the plot when mm -hmm. I start out, because you've got to write the characters for a while to figure out why, who would do what and why they would do it, what would motivate them, where they would go next. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, you don't know enough, or I don't know enough to have a plot in place till I've been writing them for a few chapters mm -hmm. because it all springs out of them. And I mean, it makes for a lot of rewriting because yeah. you get to you know, chapter six and something mm -hmm. happens, you're like, well, damn, now I have to rewrite all of chapter two and chapter three. <laughs> but, yeah. At what point in, in a writing do these characters like become people? That's yeah. early on for me. Mm -hmm. For me, those, that's the first thing that happens before they do anything useful to the book at all. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how much of it is deliberate, but I definitely want it to work that way. Because if they don't become people, that's when you find yourself forcing them in a direction that mm -hmm. may or may not work. And you can always tell a plot that somebody has forced in the direction that they wanted it to go. Because mm -hmm. it feels artificial and the characters feel out of place and uncomfortable and like they're wearing somebody else's clothes the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay. It, it does make for things maybe unfolding a little more slowly mm -hmm. because you have to let the characters find their feet first. Mm -hmm. But I like books like that. I like reading books like that. There is so much research and, 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 and research not always, doesn't always mean, you know, the big books and, and so on. It, it's, it's also researching the boring stuff and it's researching, you know, uh, um, stuff which I quite love doing because I, I also really love to not write. Yeah, yo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do anything else. Does the oven need cleaning? Maybe you should brush the cat. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, I'll brush the cat again. That's not my cat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it needed brushing right now. And the thing that Im really impressed me first in, in Broken Arbor and in all the others is the detective work. It's not super heroics, but it's pretty heroic. And it's, it's also really re real. Um, which is, of course, another research question about how about how much of this this procedure, how much how much of that did you have to sort of pick up, learn, observe? How do you go about getting to the, like the, the the lives of 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 cops and detective work and that process? Well, I'm lucky. I know a retired detective of the Garda Shikana, the Irish Police Force, who he's really generous with his time, and he's mm -hmm. also a talker, right? You know, in good Irish style. So he was, sorry? The, the retired cops are big talkers. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank God for that. My God, he saved me from making a fool of myself. I don't know how many times. Because it's not just that he answers my questions. Because the thing about doing research on something like this is you don't even know what you need to ask. Mm -hmm. So I will buy him coffee and he just tells me stories. And that's how you get not just the question, the answers to the questions you had to ask, but the atmosphere, the feel, what what do cops prioritize? What do they find worth talking about? What are the stories they tell? How do they get retold? How's the, the dynamic work between them? And he'll do things like, you know, I, I'd ring him up and go, what would you do in this situation? How would you interview this suspect? And he would do a quick demonstration over the phone using me as a potential suspect. And so you yeah. get a chance 
the oh my god how it blows you back having yeah. them switch into cart mode you yeah. know how they have that mode accessible to them at any minute where they they can switch from being just this cheerful guy who's drinking coffee with you to being a detective who's gonna get you mm -hmm. and it's you need somebody who tells stories yeah because i don't think there's any other way there's no way to just ask questions and get answers mm -hmm. and do your research right you need a talker who will tell you all those stories and give you just the texture and the edge of mm -hmm. being a cop you know who are because i was reading i think in the recent new york times i asked that you you've been going back to reading some agatha christie yeah i'm in full comfort reading mode at yeah. this stage i want stuff where it's all going to get neatly wrapped up and <laughs> everything's going to work out just fine and there's going to be closure and not just that but you know with some detective novels there's two types for me there are the ones where may, maybe they don't find the killer or maybe they do but it overturns the cop's life in the process or maybe that doesn't seem to serve justice and they're quite open-ended and they're they're fascinating to read and they're mostly what I write let's face it mm -hmm. but right now I'm kind of craving the ones where it's all wrapped up and it can all be left behind at the end you know how at the end of an Agatha Christie you get the feeling that even though a couple of people are dead the others haven't have somehow not been permanently damaged in any way. We're just going to go off to the next thing. I think we all need to feel right now that we yeah. can just leave the bad stuff behind sooner or later and move on. I think left me a little bit behind is the main impact it's had so far. Because like we were saying earlier, you rely on your subconscious so much as a writer and you don't realize until my subconscious is completely used up. I reckon probably most of us are the same. All my bandwidth is working out how to do today in a way that's safe and healthy and balancing those things. And do I have enough sanitizer? And yeah, my, my subconscious is just this smoking wasteland. Mm -hmm. So I haven't, I'm not as far on as I'd like to be with the next book. I, I'd normally be well stuck into it by now, but mm -hmm. I'm still at the sort of bouncing ideas. And I've got an idea, but it's, it's going to take more brain space than I've currently got. Mm -hmm. to turn it from an idea into a book. So I'll get there in the end. It's just taking longer because same as everyone else, the pandemic got in the way.